Welcome to 5.2's Math Moment. Today in math, students work with division when there is a two-digit divisor. In 5.1, students learned a variety of different algorithms to solve division problems. Today, I'm going to model several of those for you through these problems. So for example one, we have to just divide. We're going to take 1,470 divided by 42. I'm going to do the traditional or step-by-step -step or digit-by-digit -digit algorithm with this one. So I'm going to write down my problem and a couple of key vocabulary words that you might want to talk with over with your fifth grader is this is our divisor and this is our dividend and our answer is our quotient. So the first thing I'm going to think about is I'm going to think can 42 go into 1? I know it can't so I'm going to put an x up there. Can 42 go into 14? Again 42 is larger than 14 so it cannot. Can it go into 147? Well, I know 147 is larger than 42, so I know it can go in. What I'm going to do now is I need to figure out how many 42s are in there. And by doing that, I need to guess and check. So what we encourage the students to do is take a little piece of paper off to the side or on the side of their notebook paper where they're working. They just are going to need to do some multiplication facts to be able to figure out how many 42s are going to get them close to 147. I like to start with the number 5 because it's nice in the middle and it kind of gives you a, a spot if you need to go up or down. So when I take 2 times 5, I get 10. 4 times 2 is 20 plus one more is 21, so I've got 210. Looking at the 147, I see with my 5, I've got over it. So I'm going to bump down a number and I'm going to try 3. 42 times 3 gives me 6 and that's going to give me 12, which is 126. All right, I'm just going to double check one more time with 4 just to make sure that I can't get any closer than my 126. And when I do that, I get 168, which I've gone over. So now the best answer I'm going to use is 3. So 3 times 42 is 126. I'm going to go ahead and subtract. Six, 7 minus 6 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. And I'm going to bring down my 0. Now, one important thing that I've done up here is I've made sure that I have not erased any of my work. That's a temptation of a lot of students to save room and make their work look a little bit neater. It's really important they leave everything on their paper because as you can see, this fact that I did first is going to help me with this part of the problem. I'm going to put a 5 over here because I know 5 times 42 is 210. So the quotient or my answer to this problem is 35. Notice I do not have a remainder in this problem. Example 2 says, Fran has 216 beads. Each necklace requires 12 beads. How many necklaces can Fran create? Well, I know I had some key information in here. I'm going to have my 216 beads, and I'm going to divide that by my 12 beads that are needed for a necklace. I'm going to use a different algorithm up here, which is called expanded notation, which students learned in 5.1. This is a little bit more of a forgiving method, so if students don't know all of their facts, they can use the facts that they know to then help them solve this division problem. Looking at this one, we're going to think, can 12 go into 216? We know that it can. A lot of students are very familiar with 12 times 10 because that's 120. So I can start off with that fact to make my number a little bit smaller. So I'm going to start off with 10 up here. Notice I put each digit in the appropriate spot. When I take 10 times 120, uh, 12, I get 120. I am then going to subtract. What this does is it makes the number quite a bit smaller for students to start using, and they can think how many 12s are in 96. Well, some students might know there are 3, or they might know there's 5, or whatever fact they happen to know, they can use. Now, in this case, I'm going to use 12 times 5 because I know that's 60. I'm going to put my 5 on top, which is going to give me 12 times 5, which is 60. And now I'm going to subtract. Now, some students might think, okay, 12 can go into 36. That's, I know they can go in two times, or it can go in there one more time, or it can go in three times. Whatever fact your student knows, they can use. So in this case, I'm going to just show an example with 2. 2 times 12 is 24. And when I subtract, I get 12. 12 can go into 12 one time. 12 times 1 is 12 with nothing left over. Now, as you can see, I have a big number string up here. I need to add all of those numbers up. 
Now sometimes students might have quite a few numbers if they've only used facts that are, they're familiar with, and that can lead to some larger um, number of strings up there where they need to add them all together. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 2 plus my 5, which is 7, plus one more is 8. So I know I've got 8 plus 10. 8 plus 10 is 18. So my answer to this question is, Fran can create 18 necklaces. If you have any questions about today's math lesson, make sure you see your math teacher.